See, a guru is your doorway to God, your doorway to the beyond. A guru is not just a groovy teacher. You know, it's not a pundit. It's not just a wise man who can teach you things. A guru is a spiritual vehicle. Doorway to God. God. Doorway. Doorway to God. God. Door. Doorway to God. 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 Sakshat Param Brahma Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Marty Nico. This is DJ Drez. We want to thank the Ram Das organization for having us here for Soul Land Music Series. We're just going to share some music with you. So we invite you to chant with us, be with us. 
sing with us with deep feeling. And my sound will join up with your sound and we'll create a force yeah, out there in the universe. I think that one might be coming out soon. So stay tuned for that one if you like that mantra. Ha. <sighs> ah. Thank you, Jess. Okay. Jai Radhe, Jai Radhe, Jai Radhe. 
Yes, yes. I love, I love that one. Um, that song is from our most recent uh, record, mantra record, which is called Dreaming in Sanskrit, verse two. And that, that just really always um, has helped me come back to remember my wholeness. You know, when I feel very fragmented or just pulled apart in all these little individual pieces, you know, and you think you're going through something that no one else in the world has ever gone through. Um, Anyway, I love chanting that because it brings it back together, pulls me back together, it seals up all the places I leak energy, um, it reminds me who I am. Anyway. We, 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 we managed to gain entrance into this new world. The invisible doors of that invisible country had been opened to us by those who guard them. Those who see us, even though we cannot see them, open the door in answer to our puerile calculations, our unsteady desires, and our awkward efforts with a generous welcome. And that's much more the way the universe really is. Come with me and we'll be in a world of pure imagination. Take a look and you'll see into your imagination. We'll begin with a spin. If you want to view paradise, simply look around and view it. Anything you want, let's do it. Want to change the world, there's nothing to it. There is no 
that's much more the way the universe really is. Yes, 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 that is so true. Thank you, Ram Das. And thank you to you listening. Our next one, Om Namah Shivaya. May we remain awake to reality and to truth. I really needed this mantra for this past many, many years. <laughs> past many, many, many years. Here we go. You're listening, you're feeling. And most importantly, you're going to chant with me. Don't waste this precious time. Hear your sound. Be with it. Here we go. We'll do call and response. I go first. <laughs> Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. That's your turn. It's like we're walking with Shiva all together. Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. and drops back into one of the many rivers of the body. It's up to us for, to remember that we have these tools uh, to come back to, right? To come back to when we need it. Even when we don't think we need it, right? Even in your most joyful state. Okay, I'm gonna need your help with this one. You got a part. It's peaceful. That's your part. Okay, you go. It's peaceful going. It's peaceful. I'm going to need you, so don't leave me hanging. It's peaceful. 
that's your part. It's peaceful. You ready? Here we do, go. Do, do, do it. song with us. Where's that song from, Dress? Original, Dreaming in Sanskrit. <laughs> so if you haven't heard Dream Dreaming in Sanskrit verse 2, and you haven't heard Dreaming in Sanskrit, period, go check it. Ah. Rich, <laughs> 
JJ Ram. <laughs> okay, we know you know the next song. Please chant it with us. Sing it with us. It's a sing and maybe a little chant. <laughs> Here we go. I remember when we used to sit in a government yard in Observing the hypocrites as they would mingle with the good people we meet. Good friends we have, oh, good friends we've loved. So dry your tears, I said, and no woman no cry, no woman no cry. Hey, little darling, don't shed no tears, no, no woman no cry. Sometimes I lay under the moon and thank God I'm breathing. Then I pray, don't take me soon, cause I'm here for a reason. Sometimes in my tears I drown, but I never let it get me down. So when negativity surrounds, I know someday it'll all turn around.
Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare That's you Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare draws back in, everything's gonna be all right. You chant it, you believe it, you have faith and hope, right? Faith and hope. We truly are not alone. Deeply connected, deeply connected by our radiance. It is the tiny bits of thread woven together, this great tapestry. It is the spirit that's right here from beyond the great beyond. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. 
Thank you so much for being with us. Really, really special. To the Soul Land Music Series, thank you. Ram Das, thank you. And so we'll close with a prayer. We started with a prayer, we're closing with the prayer. From the beginning moves into the end, and the end back into the beginning again. And it comes into a circle, a circle. And it really is about giving thanks to the one uh, creator the one who sustains, the one who moves us through transformation, through the fire, to the one nearby, and the one beyond the great beyond, and to self we give thanks. To quote you, uh, Marty, in that set, yes, 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 yes. That was really amazing. Uh, Thank and it you. sounds like some of you out there were getting your dance on. So, so, so wonderful. Uh, it's such a joy to have you with us for the series and to be able to talk with you tonight. Thanks for being here. And Thanks um, for having us. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the first obvious question is, tell us a little bit about your connection with Ramdas. Do you want to go first? It's an interesting story for me. Um, I have uh, a friend who um, was a dear friend who was, uh, I, huh, it's, it's interesting. I'm trying to think how I could tell about him and I could just not tell you his name. Um, but he, he got arrested and um, because he was on the streets of whatever city he was in and just he was being kind of strange. And... Um, they didn't take him to jail, but they checked him into kind of like a mental health situation. And um, someone in there gave him be here now. Mm -hmm. And the way, um, I think he told me a little bit of that story, but years later, uh, he told me the whole story. And it was after I started practicing yoga. Mm -hmm. And... Um, he, it, he was just like, yes, yeah, so, some of the homies are, are uh, saying you're, you know, you're staring up at the sky a lot and just talking about how beautiful things are. And, uh, you know, um, and, and I was, and I was. I was having new experiences because of my yoga practice um, and seeing just this uh, bright, deep, panoramic um, vision, like, uh, not vision, but that my... my I don't know if things opened up in a way. And uh, it's interesting because he compared it to his negative situation 
Um, and his, his was substance based. He was, he told me that he was in deep par paranoia and, um, thought that everyone was reading his mind and, you know, um, so, but it's, it's interesting. He gave me be here now and I started going through it and, um, I understood why somebody gave that to him, um, just to, to open up to other ways of thinking and, um, crazy always isn't crazy. Don't get me wrong. There's, there's crazy too. Like I know some crazy ass people, but, um, there's, there's, there's versions and there's also, um, versions of, uh, I guess, uh, ways of, of seeing different things that are uh, normally unseen. And mine was just through breath and, and the practice of yoga. Um, and uh, so Be Here Now was, was, was it for me. And as far as uh, the opening up of, of who is this guy, Ram Das and, and his teachings. And um, there was a lot of really cool stuff in that book that, uh, that I just, I really appreciated. And um, later in life, I uh, started meeting people who were friends with him, like mm -hmm. uh, um, Krishna Das and Jay Uttal and, and uh, you know, people that knew him. And then other, a lot of other people that were um, affected by him and ultimately affected by Neem Karoli Baba. So, um, yeah, it's this... Uh, it's a simple connection and um, a respect for being one of the first dudes that brought uh, yoga to the West. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. So many people have stories of being touched by Be Here Now mm -hmm. and being open by that. And um, clearly, clearly it was in inspiring for so many people. And I don't know if you know it. It's the 50th anniversary of Be Here Now this year. I, I, I recently heard that. Yeah, it's a trip. 50 years goes by quick. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. I, I really appreciated the way it was laid out as an artist. Um, mm -hmm. And it was just, it was uh, very um, digestible. Yeah. yeah. Mm. What about you, Marty? Um, very similar. Actually, I remember that book in our in our house. Um, and I actually don't think we own it anymore. I think we gave it to someone else. I think that's happened a few times actually at this point, mm -hmm. um, being gifted and giving away as books, as that happens with books. But um, that wasn't my initial impact when I opened the book. I remember actually thinking like, Spin it this way, read it that way, look at it this way. You know what I mean? So, um, but I think what has been most impactful are the people who have been personally and deeply touched by Ram Dass and me engaging with those people and feeling that radiance and feeling the teachings move through them. You know, I studied, I've studied with, uh, for a, a bit with uh, Jai Uttal, for example, and, and hearing many stories of their friendship and mm -hmm. also um, their experiences with Sidima and um, Neem Kroon. Baba as well. So um, feeling that love and that joy and friendship and connection and being able to sit in 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 um, in community with mm -hmm. people receiving those uh, teachings and how they move through, you know, because even I mean, my daughter is a teacher for me, too. So, um, yeah, that's my. Yeah. It, it of course, like Drez using like sound bites and stuff like that over the years. You know, we'll be in a, um, we could be at a rave. I mean, we grew up deep in hip hop. So if you guys don't know what raves are, <laughs> pre COVID and way beyond that, <laughs> there would be raves, but there would be a hip hop room. Usually at a big rave, there would be a hip hop room or a hip hop stage. And we'd be over there and I'd be slanging the uh, mixtapes um, that he'd make nice. and, um, and he'd be DJing live and would sometimes throw in sound bites like mm -hmm. that so very yeah way back in the day that's great yeah. it, it seems like uh there's like these we catch these threads of the of Ram Dass and all of a sudden like these synchronicities start to happen in our lives around finding other people who have also caught threads um and I, I just love how seeing how that opens for so many of us um so I didn't say to the audience that these this is a Q&A for you so if you're not please any questions that are coming up put them in the chat and uh, we'll we'll bring them to these lovely lovely folks. Um, so one of the questions that came up for me when I was listening to you is, 
first of all, in that first song, you talk about your wholeness and how the song um, sort of brings you back together. And mantra is such a big part of your creative art efforts. And so I'm wondering if you could talk to us a little bit about Sanskrit and mantra um, for those who it might be new to or just always it's a great reminder if we already have learned a little bit. So um, I've been uh, singing and um, I guess performing for a really long time. Um, and I grew up, my, my dad is, um, is still a, a pianist and, and performs still. He even has a gig right now in Half Moon Bay as we're speaking live here. <laughs> um, and I thought I was going to be this like major, major something. Um, some people could say I'm major, meaning I'm a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I thought I was going to be major in a different way. And there was an intensity and a pressure I put on myself with songwriting and that kind of thing. And so when I fell into the bhakti practice, it really was something that held me. Mm -hmm. And the first time I could let go of like the words and um, sit more with the meaning and the feeling. Um, and that really came together for me in a deep way. And so... Um, the mantra practice is so powerful for me and has allowed me to um, explore my creativity um, in a not so um, self-judged way or harsh way or I don't, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not really coming with the words, um, but um, it, it opened, it liberated me from my own chains and my own shackles, mm -hmm. the way that I've um, kept myself captive or caged. Um, yeah, and from the competition of it all, Dres said, and from the competition, yeah, the the constant competition that can happen in other realms and to be able to be in this um, spiritual place. So it's kind of been my life savior because when you're an artist and we all are as human beings, you know, if you look at the world, what the humans have created, some good, some not so good, right? Some terrible. Um, but uh, when you're not creating, you're kind of um, in for artists, if you really connect to that term artist and, and, and creating, um, it's almost like you're dying. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So when I'm not doing my art, when I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, I feel like I'm on the path to death. And, and mm -hmm. with that competition, with that cagedness and the shackles, I really felt like I was traveling down um, mm -hmm. that road of, yeah. So that's what the bhakti practice has done for me and the mantra practice has really allowed me to become free of those things, whether self-inflicted or society inflicted or both or, yeah. That's a great description of how mantra works. I like that it like unhooks us from the from the shackles. Yeah. And I like to let people know too, you know, it's not a guarantee. I mean, I um, happen to be a person that discourages people from telling other people how to feel. And I think that we, we want to sometimes say, come on, you'll feel good. You'll feel great. You know, and that's not a guarantee. You know, sometimes the mantra frees you and then you're exposed to all the things, all the secrets, all the places you've hidden those, you know, things you want nobody to know about. You're for sure. You're the only person that's ever experienced this in life. Right. Mm -hmm. So you, you hide it and you tuck it down and then you're exposed to that. So you have to meet yourself where you are with all of that and hold that. And sometimes that isn't the greatest feeling and that's okay too. You know what I mean? Totally. But usually uh, a, a side effect of chanting and, and bhakti and being in a place of devotion and in service is joy, is a longer uh, sustaining uh, connection of of joy and happiness so i call it a side effect you know not like a guarantee it. i like it i was listening to a ramdas lecture today where he talks about um the neuroses that we all have and um eventually getting to where you can have a little bit of a break from them in the fact that you they're just little schmooze that show up they're like oh come in for tea like there you are again <laughs> what you said just reminded me of that totally totally sorry go ahead what were you gonna say Jez? I wasn't going to say anything. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but I can if you yeah. want. <laughs> or maybe you can tell us. I would imagine most people out there might know what bhakti is. But in case there's some people who don't, you want to talk a little bit about bhakti? Uh, bhakti is is the relationship with, um, you know, uh, I used to have a um, something that I said, and then I had something else that I said. And uh, about about bhakti, and um, um, 
it's so many things. It's the re- relationship, obviously, with the divine and, mm-hmm. and with the unseen and with the seen um, and, and with yourself. And um, uh, it's... Um, well, she, she asked me to share my first uh, a story with uh, when I learned my first mantra. Um, and uh, it, it, uh, my first mantra was um, Asatoma, which, has, which uh, has to do with bringing the light to the dark and the real to the unreal mm. and, and, and so on. And uh, my teacher, um, she taught this to me. And I, as I practiced, I think it was like a week or two before I saw her again. And... Uh, during that week, I experienced some beautiful things, the, just the clarity and just um, the beauty and the vibration of just this feeling. I, that I, mm. It's ineffable. I can't really explain it. And uh, the next time I saw her, I said, hey, I just want to tell you, I've been having these beautiful experiences. I want to share them with you. And I just... Uh, well, I wanted, uh, first of all, I want to make sure that I was saying the mantra right. And uh, and so I recited it to her, and she was like, ah, you're, you're almost good, but you're staying in the darkness, in, in the mantra. And I'm like, oh, man. And so, um, in other words, I had been practicing it wrong. Mm. She said... She said, that's okay. Once th- there, was, uh, there was a young yogi sitting on the side of a deep flowing river. And across the way, there were these, these elders. And they were listening to him go through his japa this, with his mala, saying this mantra. And they were like, oh, he's saying it wrong. We should let him know. He's never going to reach samadhi. He's, he's not going to get where he wants to go. So they started calling over to him whatever, Baba, Yogi, like, wake, you know, snap out of it, you know, and, and he opened his eyes, the young Yogi, and he, um, they're like, come here, here." and he started to go towards them, and he walked on the water, and they said, never mind, (laughs) and um, so the idea is, the intention, obviously. And she was like, that's beautiful that you're feeling these things, which means you are in the right place. The words are important. The, the, um, the pr- how to pronounce the words are important. All these things are important. Um, and there's something that is stronger than what comes out of the mouth. Love and that. Um, so that was, that was that's nice. That's a great story. <laughs> yeah. That's a great yeah. story. I love it. Thank you for sharing it. And I, there's so many more questions that I want to ask and so many more questions coming through. And we have got, that was our time. Wow. Wow. I wow, know wow. it went so fast. It was so fast, but it was such a pleasure to chat with you. I wish we could do more. Um, real quick, real quick. Uh, where can people find you? You can find us on Instagram for sure at Marty Nico, N-I-K-K-O, at DJ Drez. Um, Same names for the websites. You can find us all this music, most of this music on Spotify and iTunes. And then Drez also has some free downloads for us, um, whoever's interested on his Bandcamp, which is djdrez.bandcamp.com for for any of um, the mixes. And oh, YouTube. You can find us everywhere. I mean, just, you know, Google the name. All right. Sounds good. So everyone who's watching from around the globe, send you, we're all sending you some love and applause in this like virtual setting. Big and, love uh, to the world. Thank you. Yay. Thank you so much as we say goodbye. Um, and we're going to uh, take a super quick break right now. Come back with Rise in Appalachia. Um, and during that break, I'm going to ask you to consider uh, helping folks in India breathe. I don't know if you know, but India is suffering from a devastating COVID crisis. And we're encouraging people in the community to help provide oxygen and other life-saving supplies and those who, those who urgently need it. Um, Humanity First Foundation is a small organization determined to help people in the city of Hyderabad get oxygen cylinders. Um, so there's a link um, and you can contribute that way. And we will see you in exactly two minutes. <laughs> 